the mayor of New York City announced a partial school and reopening, I immediately, you know, tried to get accredited. This process will take at least one year for me to get accredited. However, I now found a little, you know, kind of a loophole in it where we can do online classes. And I, as I said, I don't want to announce it until it happens. So keep that in mind. We will be working on accreditation. Today, as I'm speaking to the parents and as we're going into this process, today we do not have the accreditation. The next best thing is to run a homeschool co-op. This means that the students are coming to Queller Prep, they're receiving the entire education, they are getting homework, you're essentially running a kind of a private school environment, and we're going to, I personally, I mean, I'm happy to listen to parents. I'm willing to listen sometimes. I really am. I'm, and and I'm, we're, I'm willing to listen to different learning models, but I would prefer to do a traditional learning model where the kids are going to learn standardized test taking skills, um, preparation for the specialized high school entrance exams, um, you know, and that really happens years in advance. So keep in mind my, I, I, I really appreciate Sarah sending me multiple models, but my intention of the Queller Co-op is going to be to follow a traditional learning model. So please know that that's um, the path that we're going on and it's going to be a regular school. As we're waiting, uh, and Sarah, I think you're ready to go. I just want to quickly skim the questions just so we go through it. Queller's going to offer, Rehan is asking, what will Queller offer? We're going to be offering grade level currently, grade three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We're going to be offering grade level. The reason we're starting with grade three and ending with eight, grade three, naturally, that's when you start the state testing for the ELA math exams. We're going to administer Queller exams that you know mimic those tests, and we're also going to team up with ERB Learn. We're going to offer outside testing. Um, I'm also going to connect with Terra Nova, but I think ERBs, I see middle level IC, upper level IC, we're going to be offering outside testing. So it's not like the kids are just taking exams at Queller. Jamie, on the DOE website, the homeschool link sends you to info and homeschool instruction. There's a difference. I don't need to see the steps. Um, do they apply to homeschool? The legal steps, Sarah's going to cover. So let's just kind of sit tight for that. Erica, for middle school students, are their test requires to demonstrate homeschool standards? We will be administering internal exams and external exams. I'm not interested in everyone getting 100 in a Queller exam, although our exams are pretty tough. Kids who do homeschool at Queller Prep will be taking external exams at Prometric centers outside of Queller. So we will be testing kids to see how they perform. Um, very likely, we're gonna go for the IC route to see how they perform and the ERB and Terra Nova path. Um, how will Queller teach the core classes? We, um, I'm actually teaming up with Sarah. So Ter Sarah is going to be a retained education consultant who I'm probably gonna be calling, emailing, and text messaging every single day to make sure that we're fully aligned and following um, a homeschool curriculum. We will be planning for accelerated learning. I would like my future lawyers and doctors to be here in my learning center. I trust myself to get this job done. Um, what are the core classes we're teaching? We're teaching English, math, science, history, and we're going to choose language. I actually have always wanted to introduce language, so here's my big chance to do it. As many of you already know, I've always wanted to run a writing class and this, um, you know, Zoom and online learning, I finally had my chance to just run um, a writing class, which has been great. What are the safety precautions for Queller? Everything, everything. We have multiple temperature checks. We, we invested heavily in plexiglass. We've separated the classrooms. We have deep cleaning. I actually personally supervise the deep cleaning in Queens and Satya does it in Manhattan. If there is a supervised cleaning that goes on, um, well, we need to be COVID tested. You know, if the tests become available where I can purchase them, the answer is yes. Um, outside of that, we're going to do temperature checks. Um, and I do want to, you know, uh, the last question, will Queller Prep help with the paperwork? We will help with every single part of the legal aspect of you becoming a homeschooled parent. And the reason that we are doing that is because we want to make sure that you don't have any issues converting your child from a public school or even private school to homeschooling. Open up in Brooklyn. There's only one of me. My personality is a micromanager. Um, many of you know that you're getting those three emails a night 
and you, you, I mean, I'm certain your kids who come here already know how I operate. I can't do it. A uh, family. Uh, okay. In terms of tuition right now, we're figuring out the tuition, but you have to understand there, there are behind the scenes expenses in just making everything work and run. And as I said, we did retain out, I'm a lawyer, but we retained, I retained the lawyer who specializes in this to help us get the middle States accreditation. Um, you know, so I'm just letting you know, there are some overhead that we want to make sure we've covered to run the program properly. With that being said, um, I cannot open a Queller in Brooklyn. It's not realistic. I barely, I, I barely made Manhattan work. It took a lot of effort. Um, and, uh, you know, and the other day someone said, Satya talks like me, pauses like me and acts like me. And she's half my age. So please everyone bear with me as I'm, you know, we work really hard to micromanage Queens and Manhattan. So th th I'm really just saying this is it. There won't be any more locations in the future. It's just too much to manage. We will have Zoom. We're going to have I, again, I don't want to say yet, but I'm telling you the plan is to have accredited classes and I'm working on it and I think it's going to happen. So let's just, you know, be in touch with that. I think I answered all the questions in the chat box, unless I missed anything. Can you do half a year? So I do want to make this clear right now. We are just charging a monthly tuition. So when you enroll, you're just paying for the first month. We're going to iron everything out and then we are working. The supplemental classes are still going to take place. Queller prep isn't going anywhere. We're just adding a homeschool daytime class element. And I even see myself as a mother. I ran out of my house today to come to the office. See the office? See that? I ran out of my house because I needed quiet to have this meeting. So we want to give parents the option to have a peaceful, quiet, safe setting for their children in a small group and to run. Um, I want to just answer a few more quick, quick chat questions and then Sarah will continue. Um, how does supplemental work versus co-op? Again, the co-op is going, we're going to go into the mechanics of it, but supplemental is not going anywhere. Queller Prep is still offering supplemental test preparation as we always do, but the co-op is going to be a daytime option. Grades three, four, five are coming from the, um, from eight to 12. Grades, uh, grades, I think it's six, seven, eight or in the afternoon. A couple of parents reached out about grades nine, 10, 11, 12. I would love to do that it's likely going to happen in the evening because we, we just don't have the physical space for it. So if we run the nine to 12, which I would love to do, I would, oh my goodness, the kids are going to take APs. We're going to, by the way, th there will be a lot of hands holding. We're going to help you sign up for the AP exam so that you can take, you know, you don't have to take an AP class, right? You can, I hope you guys know that. So we're going to help you take the SAT two subject test, the APs. I, I would very much like to do it. I just, um, the physical space isn't there, but it, it's on the radar in terms of older. A sample schedule, Sarah is amazing. And she's going to send me a sample schedule, which I'll forward to all the parents. All right. Um, in terms of breaks, we really are going to be very, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to learn what the kids need. So, you know, some kids need breaks, some kids don't need breaks, some kids need a minute for water, they get back to work. It really just depends on what kids are enrolled. We're not going to have a structured break where the kids like do nothing and, you know, play on their phones. Like that, that's not going to happen. What we will do is provide an academic schedule if they want to take a minute or so or request water, take the bathroom. What we will have though is mandatory hand washing. So as soon as the kids come in, they're settled, get up, wash your hands. Then when you, I just want to quickly, quickly go over the mechanics. Before you physically enter Queller Prep in person, we take your temperature. Your temperature has to be nine, below 99. You come into Queller Prep. Once you're seated, you go wash your hands. Every single tutor, I did this with my own hands. Every single tutor has, uh, it's plugged into their phone as an alarm. It's a daily alarm right now. They have to go wash their hands. Then everyone sits down. They sit down one student per desk. As they're seated one student per desk, at the end of the program, uh, which is four hours, about three hours and 45 minutes later, we have a second mandatory hand washing. So that kind of is the break where they get to stretch and stuff. So keep that in mind as well. Um, jo uh, Joanne, do you think it will be possible to use this program to supplement online learning? We're going to work on it. I, I mean, we're, we're working on it. But right now, I just want to narrow down the conversation to us offering a full-time program. Um, the school did not have a set schedule. I, I really want to make this clear to the parents. The whole reason why we're doing this right now is because the schools still don't have a set schedule for parents. And I don't see one coming anytime soon. So I think what makes the most sense right now is to say that as the public schools are figuring things out and as the rules keep changing, let's go for something solid that we know is going to work. 
So please keep that in mind as well. Um, will Queller offer supplemental learning? We, uh, we will offer everything we used to offer on the evenings after school and weekends. I'm specifically referring to daytime programs that we want where we will teach four core subjects plus a language. Will you have an online option instead of in person? Um, yeah, we, we already have an online option for the homeschooling and I'm working really hard and I, I, I can't wait to send you an email saying that we are going to be able to offer credits, which is really just going to be a big game changer for the program. Um, do you plan Zoom homeschooling? Yes, we're going to offer a Zoom homeschooling. If you're not able to physically send your kids here, it's perfectly fine. We'll drive the book bag over. Um, will you be offering anything for second graders? Not yet. I want to, um, third grade is very, it, it's an important year. So I, I, I really, right now it's just going to be third grade because I want to start teaching them how to handle common four questions and testing. There's a big benefit to testing. I know there's a lot of back and forth on it, but there really is a benefit to teaching kids from third grade how to become good test takers. Um, language is really exciting. So um, I definitely want to do, I, my children, by the way, speak English. They speak Russian fluently. I'm probably going to add Hebrew in down the road. I personally speak Spanish really well. And that language has just taken me so far in my personal life, in my professional life. I'm really exciting, excited to share that we're going to have several languages offered. It's something that we're going to discuss. But um, I don't know. I mean, we're, we might not even stop at one. I love language. The Ivy Leagues love kids who have language. I'm all about having a global citizen. So I love the idea of having language. And you know what? This is my big opportunity to push language, and I'm pushing language. So I, I get some cool stuff, okay? Um, more than one. What is the IC test? What is the Middle States Accreditation? Middle States Accreditation is an organization that's going to help me get, uh, it's going to help me issue credits. It's going to help me get a certification. I can't speak too much about it. You're welcome to look it up, but I, I don't want to talk about it until I get it. I'm just letting you know that I'm working on it right now, seven days a week. Um, yeah, the kids are going to have homework after every class. It's, we're, we're operating a school. We're operating a private school in that regard. Um, keep that in mind. So I, I think I went through all the chat questions. If I didn't, please retype it if I missed something. But I think that we're good. I think that we've covered all the big stuff. And I'm really excited. And I just want to remind all of you that I'm a child of immigrants. And I navigated quite a lot on my path to going to NYU. I graduated from the Steinhardt School of Education. Um, I really just want to share that, you know, knowledge is power. Um, keep it, I sat for the bar exam. I graduated from Hofstra School of Law. I don't know. I just, I really just love what we do at Queller Prep. And I think this is going to take us to a whole new level of opportunity with the kids. I always like having the kids, by the way, full time um, over the summer. I just want you to know like, it is my favorite time of year is full time, you know, learning at Queller. So just keep that in mind as well. All right. So Sarah, go ahead from here. I think I finished all of the chats. Um, uh, regions accreditation we're working on. Okay. I'm just letting you know, we're working on regions accreditation. We're definitely going to have kids sitting for exams, like absolutely that are external to the tutoring center. They will be tested outside of Queller prep as they are in our, you know, center for homeschooling. We will be prepping them for external exams. I very much plan on the kids taking, and we will help them register for the middle level IC the upper level IC, uh, the SHSAT, we will include that in our curriculum. And I mean, it should have always been that way, but now we get to do it. All right, so go ahead, Sarah, please take over. Okay, so right now we're gonna get into the mechanics of homeschooling, the step-by-step. -step. So this is your step-by-step -step field guide. I like that name, it's a field guide to navigate homeschooling in New York with confidence and ease. All right, so a little bit of the agenda. I'm gonna talk about your state requirements. So New York requirements. And then if you'd like to, you can create a step-by-step -step checklist to make sure you get each of these done. We're gonna talk IHIPs, quarterly reports, year-end assessments. And then I'm gonna tell you exactly what courses are required for whatever grade your student is in. And then we can talk about best practices and I'll answer any of your questions if you have any of those. Okay, so we're, I'm gonna be talking about tons of resources and i'm going to send uh francis the pdf actually she has the pdf already and she'll send that to you when we're finished you're going to find yeah. a whole page of resources and links but one of the ones that i want you to remember and if you need to write this down do it it's the hslda 
So it's a homeschool legal defense association. That is where you're going to go to answer a lot of these questions. And so this is actually a screenshot of their website. Now, I don't know if you can see where the colors that they, the color key, New York is in dark, that dark purple. It is a high regulation state. So there are quite a few things that are regulated and that you have to do, but you still get a lot of these freedoms. And, and the nice thing is with New York, there's only one option for homeschooling and it's straightforward, very simple. So let's go through what that is. So if you are a new homeschooler, okay, so if you've homeschooled before and this is your second year, you, you're gonna have to re-enroll with something else later. But if this is your first year, you're going to have to formally withdraw your child from public school by July 1st. Like, so everyone Sarah. pay it. So every, yes, that's what I, I'm so sorry to interrupt. I do, sorry, sir. But I want to remind the parents that you are, look at July 1st. So we're behind. Okay. Pay attention guys. I'm, I'm shut. I'm shutting up now. Bye. <laughs> okay. So if you're like, Sarah, uh, it's definitely past July 1st. Hello, update your slide. No, it was July 1st. There's still an option to withdraw your students. And I'm going to talk about that in two slides. So here's what you need physically to withdraw your child. Okay. You need a birth certificate. You need your proof of residence, and then you need a letter of intent. And I'm going to give you that in the PDFs that I'm sending you later. I'll also show you an example now. So those are the three things that you need for each child, you need their birth certificate if you're doing multiple children. So you are required to submit, submit a letter of intent start stating your intention to homeschool your child by July 1st, or here's that little loophole, within two weeks of your decision to homeschool. So you can't just pull your student out from, from public school and, and, and do that on your own. You have to submit a letter of intent so they know where your student is, that they are receiving education, and, and that you're following all the guidelines. That letter, so the letter of intent, the LOI, must include your child's name, age, and grade level. So here's an example on, on the right side of the screen. I'm sending you this PDF so you'll have it and you can copy it verbatim. It'll be your name, address, state, all these things. Include the date as well. And then this is the actual address, that Central Office of Homeschooling, 333 7th Avenue. That is the address that you'll be sending this into. And you're gonna say, dear homeschooling manager, you'll put your child's name, their age, uh, date of birth, and their grade level. This letter provides written notice of our intention to educate our child, Sam, John, whatever their name is, at home for the coming school year, 2020 to 2021, sincerely, and then you'll just sign it. And that's all you have to do. That is your letter of intent. Now, you also, so that's for new homeschool parents. Okay, so if this, this is your first year, you have to submit a letter of intent. Now, this is the IHIP. So I'm going to call it IHIP, and that stands for Individualized Home Instruction Plan. That has to be submitted by August 15th, and then you're also going to have to submit quarterly reports. So let's look at an example of the IHIP. So it, what this is, is it's uh, an indiv individualized home instruction plan. So really, it's the syllabus, the course materials that you're going to use, and the subjects that you're going to cover. And yes, I'm going to send you this PDF as soon as we're done, and Francis will forward that to you. And I want you to take note of this, you, the cumulative hours. So if you have a child in first through sixth grade, their cumulative hours through all of those grades should be 900 hours. Now, if you have a student in seven through 12, cumulatively, you need to reach 990 hours, okay? And so what, what you're gonna do is you're gonna fill this out. There's actually three pages. This is the first page. So if you can see at the top, it's just standard information, name, date, birthday, and then your information, name, date, birthday, these things. And then you're gonna talk about the subjects. So um, in arithmetic, so math, uh, if your student is in ninth grade, perhaps you say, we are doing geometry, um, or sorry, eighth grade, we're doing geometry with this certain textbook, or, and we're partnering with Queller Prep to do, this, to do this program. And so you can actually say, we're following the logistics of Queller Prep and we're, we will be a part of that program yeah. as a co-op. And then okay. Sarah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for interrupting, but I, want, I, I, I hope you don't mind, I'm gonna keep doing it. No, go um, for it. I, I just wanna make something clear to the, I just wanna make something clear to the parents. Sarah is going to help, you know, go through the nitty gritty and the paperwork so that all of this is submitted and it's time sensitive. So we're going to be working on this rather quickly. 
um, just take a look at everything. I'm going to send, please check the chat box. I'm going to send you links to look at this, but just keep in mind those who opt for the homeschool co-op, the one that we plan to run here, that we're hoping to run full time. You're welcome, by the way, to supplement your learning at Queller as regular, but I, I really, really just want to focus on full time learning at the center, if that's at all, you know, possible, a good option for the parents. So keep in mind this paperwork, we will, Sarah and I are going to team up and we're going to help. And, and we have an army of tutors here who are, will help with all the paperwork. So go ahead. Okay. So this is just an example of the first through sixth and then seventh through 12th looks similar as well. But the first page is simply information and then it starts on subject. And so, and that follows over to page two, you'll just talk about, um, and this is your syllabus, um, due dates, uh, big projects, um, examples of uh, work, as well as materials, textbooks, all these things. And then the final page is just saying, these are when the reports are due. So I'm gonna give you those dates right now. Um, oh, actually, I'll give them to you in just a moment. So then, actually, okay, yeah, we're gonna talk about the quarterly reports. And I'm gonna have you write down these dates because they're really important. But just so you know, you're gonna have to submit. So, so let's go back, let's go back. First thing you have to do is you have to submit a letter of intent. The second thing you're gonna to have to do is submit the individualized home instruction plan, that's the IHIP. The third thing that you're going to have to do is a quarterly report. Now there are four of these because they're quarterly. Now, if you have a student in first through sixth grade, you should know that you should approximate 225 hours to get to that 900 total. And then if you have seven through 12, it should be approximately 247 and a half hours of instruction per quarter. So go ahead and look at that sheet on the right. Again, just information. And then all you're doing is you're saying, these are the subjects we've covered and, and these are the materials we used and this was their grade. So essentially you're taking the information from the IHIP, kind of moving it over and then adding a grade or an evaluation. Okay, and then we're gonna talk about this certain evaluations that you need for homeschooling in New York in just one moment. Okay, now what I'd like you to do is if you're on your uh, phone, go ahead and screenshot, or if you're watching this, I want you to write these dates down because these are important dates. These are the quarterly reports that you're going to have to submit. So the first quarterly report is due November 15th, 2020. The second, January 31st, 2021. The third, April 15th, 2021, and the fourth is due July 30th, 2021. Okay, these are important dates. Now, I should note that you can actually choose different dates, but these are the ones I'm going to highly recommend so that you follow the timeline and you make sure that they're spread apart evenly and that they get turned in on time. So uh, I'm not saying these are a must, 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 but they do have to be submitted so many weeks apart, and these are the guidelines of which I would suggest using, or the dates I would suggest using. Okay, now standardized tests. There's so many questions about standardized tests, and, and some states actually don't require standardized tests, but New York does require standardized and or narrative, uh, narrative assessments. We'll talk, uh, yeah. So if you're taking a standardized test, then to demonstrate satisfactory progress, your student's composite score must be above the 33rd percentile, or the score must reflect one academic year of growth compared to a test administrated, administered the prior year. Okay, so really that important part is you have to be in the 33rd percentile or above. And, and so here, again, if you wanna screenshot these, but you'll receive all of the slides later. For New York, these are the tests that you can choose from. So the Iowa test of basic skills, California achievement test. Um, you can actually get another test approved by the state education, but the Iowa, state, the Iowa test, the California test, and the Stanford achievement test are the three most popular in New York. Okay. It's likely parents that we're just, I'm, I'm gonna team up with Sarah. It's likely that we're gonna do all three tests. So just prepare. I, I, again, I prefer to over test. I wanna see where the kids are. You can always decide later what you want to do with those scores. Do you mind just quickly going over the exams again, just so that they understand the difference? And the California test is not just in California. So I just wanna make sure uh, one more time so that the parents are familiar with it. Yeah, so, um, you, so actually I'm gonna go talk about the test a little bit more in just a moment, but these are the tests that you can choose from. Now, let me, let me move on real fast and then I'm gonna actually come back to this. So the other test that you can take is a narrative assessment evaluation. 
So this can be conducted by a certified teacher, home instruction peer group, a review panel, or another person with the consent of the local superintendent. And, and so this is an example, actually, let me come back to this, but here's what I want you to know. Here's your year end assessments in your tests. In grades one through three, standardized and written narratives are totally optional. So if you have a student one through three, those are optional. Now in grades four through eight, they are required at least every other year. So what you could do is you could say, okay, fourth grade, we'll do a narrative assessment. And then fifth and seventh, we will do state standardized tests. That is totally acceptable. And then in ninth through 12th, standardized or testing is required every single year. Okay, so let's go back to those standardized tests. These are the tests that you get to choose from. Iowa, Iowa Test of Basic Skills, California Achievement, Stanford Achievement, and, and really there, there's a few more listed there. You can, you can take another test approved by the State Education Department, um, such as the Personalized Achievement Summary System, and that can be either grades one through three that's popular for, or even child, children with special needs. They will take the PASS, the PASS test, okay? Um, uh, Francis, did I answer that uh, acceptably? I'm going to say yes. Um, and, uh, yeah, sorry, I was I was on mute. I apologize. Um, okay. I just want to I just want to be really clear about the testing. In addition to the testing that Sarah talked about, we're also going to give kids an exit out once they're done because at the moment we're just going to focus on grade three to eight. And my experience is that it takes years to get ready for the upper level IC to master it, um, the SHSCT. So. We, in, in addition to the testing that Sarah mentioned, we're going to also prep kids within our program for the IC, for the tax exam, for the HSPT, if you want to go that route. We will also be prepping students for the IC, which is under the erblearn.org. You can take that test. These exams that I'm referring to are going to be to help your kids get into high schools. And if you want um, the, for example, the Hunter exam, we're going to teach kids descriptive essay writing, which I got to sneak in. Um, many, many families uh, participated in that class when we had to switch over to Zoom. So there's a lot of uh, testing, AMC8 math competitions. There's a lot of testing beyond what Sarah's talking about. Um, I mean, guys, we're a test prep center. Like we're definitely testing the kids, okay? But keep in mind this conversation, this meeting is twofold. You do not have to enroll your kids into the Queller Homeschool Co-op. If you choose to go that route, we will be administering a lot of exams within the program. Go ahead. Okay, um, so then now I just wanna talk about narrative assessment evaluations. So this is kind of what this would look like. Um, so on the left, I have some handwritten examples typed up by homeschooling parents that have been homeschooling in New York and have offered what they've submitted. And then I also have the New York uh, City Department of Education, their form for an example narrative assessment. So in, in the example on the left, you can simply say, um, my student, so Johnny has met or exceeded all of the goals as set forth in his or her IHIP for the current school year. And that's it. You would reevaluate your IHIP uh, and you would say, yes, we met these goals. Or you can use the, la the, the second one, um, Johnny is progressing at a satisfactory level above uh, or in all subject matters. So, and then you would insert those required courses, math, science, da, 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 da. We had instruction in all of the following areas as per section 100.10 of the regulations of the New York State Commissioner of Education and individual the IHIP. And then again, listing all of those subjects. So simply the narrative, ass narrative assessment is saying, yes, we've met our requirements that we set for ourselves and that's how that went. Okay, so let's look at the required courses because I know there are so many courses. And as I'm talking about required courses, I, I just want you to think about for the purposes of this subdivision, a unit, because I'm gonna be talking about a unit of English, a unit of math, that's 6,480 minutes or 108 hours. So when, as I'm talking about um, units, I just want you to think 108 hours, okay? So here's, if you're grades one through six, these are the courses that are required and, and it's, and, and so it's arithmetic, reading, spelling, writing, English, geography, U.S. history, science, health, music, visual arts, visual education, and bilingual education if needed. So that's if 
you have a student with an, uh, an, an ESL student or where the need is indicated. And I know that Queller Prep ha has said, okay, we're gonna cover the science, English, math, history, and language. And so those are the courses that have already been taken care of by Queller Prep and said, you know what, we're gonna partner with you. And so you would be responsible for anything else that isn't covered by Queller Prep. So if but you we're able, yeah, and I just wanna quickly interrupt. We will be able to, you know, guide us in the right direction. We can have optional art classes, which is very simple. My kids go to, um, Kimmy Ma Art Studio on Union Turnpike. It is a great, I can abs, we can absolutely provide this, but I don't want to focus on like a 0.5 unit when I need to focus on the two units and the three units. Like I want our time and energy right now to be focused on core. So I just want to be clear on how, my priorities. Adding a 0.5 unit of art is something if needed, we will figure out how to do and we'll, we'll team up. We'll team up with, you know, local art schools so that we can get that done. It's not a no, it's just a matter of priorities. My big priority is going to be English, history, science, math, and then um, you'll help us just understand what else we need to do to get the, you know, phys ed, art, and music. Right, go ahead. There you go. Okay, so again, just to look at 7th through 8th, if you're taking notes, feel free to screenshot this or you'll receive the, the PDF uh, slides later. So English, you'll have to have two units. So that means 216 hours, but that's cumulative, 7th through 8th grade. So again, it, it, it just depends how fast you go through. There's history and geography covered by Queller Prep, science, mathematics, those are things that have already been uh, that Queller Prep has said, hey, we are, we're responsible for this. We want you to be able to partner with us on this. And then what it means by, I, I just wanted to clarify this because I think this is important. Uh, when it says regular basis, so that's physical education, health education, practical arts, library skills, those are just things, skills that you have to keep up to date. And, and that's what that means. So physical education, perhaps 20 minutes a day or 40 minutes every other day, something like that. And then ninth, oh, sorry, additionally, um, this is something important to note. Before ninth grade, these three courses must be covered at some capacity. U.S. history, New York state history, and constitutions of the United States and New York state, okay? So those are not in a specific grade. They just have to be covered before ninth grade something important to note. Now, ninth through 12th, here's what you have to have. Remember, these are cumulative. So when it says English four units, that's probably one per year. When it says science two units, you get to determine when those are. Um, so English, social studies, and then social studies, they kind of break down exactly what social studies you need. So you get to, uh, you'll have to do one American history, one government, and half a unit of economics, and then the rest is up to you and then uh, physical ed, health ed, art and music. So you get to choose in nine through 12, art or music, and then you have to have three different electives. This is important to notice. This has to be covered sometime in between K through 12. At some point, you have to do these with your students, and that's talk about patriotism and citizenship, health education regarding alcohol, drug, and tobacco misuse, highway safety and traffic regulations, including bicycle safety, and fire arson prevention. So, Here's my recommendation. If you have one of the students K through two, because Queller Prep will be partnering three through eight. If you have a K through two student and you wanna start talking about these things, go to the museums about fire safety or police museums. Partner with doctors to talk about the different, the different um, health education regarding alcohol, drug, and tobacco misuse. Um, but so, yeah, and Sarah, we, Sarah, we can easily just invite a physician and we can do like a career day. So it, I just want to make sure that we can get around some of these requirements because we're not, we're not going to museums anytime soon. I just yeah, want to make sure that we understand. So I can invite a fireman. I have to do a fire and safety check anyway. So I have a cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> so that could be checked. Um, a police muse, we're, we're not going. So realistically, I want to see, I mean, I can ask the local precinct, we can do a webinar. I just want to make sure that all of this doesn't require physical, you know, m movement of the students. So I can sure. easily run webinars similar to what we're doing right now. I just want to make sure we would have a green light to go in that, in that route. Yeah, of course. And a lot of these things are COVID specific, like we can't go to museums, we can't go to these things. So webinars and partnering with Queller Prep to meet with different people and occupations is an excellent idea. Okay, so now what I think 
we can talk about best practices, but what I think I'd like to do is answer some of them more, answer more of the questions. Uh, Francis and I can answer some of those questions in those comment boxes. Is that okay? Um, I can, yeah, I can quickly look at the chat box. Let me just see what's here. Hold on just a moment. Um, Jamie wrote, homeschool instruction requires that a child be physically or medically unable to attend regular school. Is that correct? Or you can simply choose homes. I don't know if that's correct. Can you, can't you simply choose to homeschool? Is that correct? Where's that? Where's that? Jamie, I'm just scrolling up a little bit. I can read, I, I can read it to you. Jamie, home instruction requires that a child be physically or medically unable to attend regular school. I, I don't think that's accurate. Is that correct? Can you check okay, on that, so, please? Uh, Jamie, what I think you're talking about is home instruction is partnering with public school. So if you're intending on using public school resources and still being part of a public school, that would be home instruction. Homeschooling is saying we accept, we as parents, accept full responsibility of the education of our child. So you are no longer being provided resources. So that can be special needs, gifted and talented, medically, anything like that. We are no longer accepting those resources and we accept full uh, responsibility. Now there is uh, opportunities to partner with public schools and get some of those resources, but home instruction, uh, I believe for New York is, uh, partnering still with the public school and being a part of the public school where homeschooling is a totally separate entity. We are homeschooling as parents and we are responsible for the education of our child. And I do want to make a note about the actual book. So as many of you know, you can easily, by the way, go on Amazon just to get a glimpse. We publish around 35 different textbooks. We have common core grade three, four, five, six. We have an ACT. We have, we, have, we have a lot of prep books. We have an AP physics book that we publish. We have an AP literature book that we publish, a math two book that we publish. We have a lot of material. Outside of that, we also, I mean, we would invest in the Go Math line or, you know, we, we will figure out the books on our end. We do not plan to rely on the schools to give us textbooks. I, I, went to public school myself. Sometimes I got books a week or 10 days later. So just keep in mind, my, our plan is to have the kids ready to go and to use our own, you know, researched and proper books and materials. Uh, just keep that in mind. We're not opting for home instruction. We're going to be opting for, um, for a homeschooling curriculum. So go ahead, Sarah, if you can continue. Okay, so I want to I want to kind of talk about the home, the steps. So if you're ready, let's talk about the steps. First thing that you're going to have to do is you have to file a letter of intent that was due July 1st or within the two weeks of deciding to homeschool. So when you decide to homeschool, that's where you're going to submit that letter of intent. And, and the PDF that you'll receive has the address that you'll send that to. And um, the second thing you're going to have to do is let me just go to my slide so you can follow along with me. Okay, so letter of intent is the first thing you have to do. Second thing is the individualized home instruction plan. That's by July 15th. If you haven't written that date down, I would make a note of that. The next thing that you're going to have to do is submit the quarterly reports, okay? And the quarterly reports are due November 15th and then January 31st, April 15th and July 30th of 2021. The third thing that you're going to have to do is decide, depending on your student's age, which test you're doing, whether that's standardized or narrative assessments. Now, if you're in high school, you have to do standardized testing every single year. If you're in uh, first through sixth, sorry, if you're in first through third, they're totally optional. Fourth through eighth, they have to be done every other year at least, but you can decide to start with a narrative evaluation um, as well. So those are the steps to kind of how to homeschool in New York. Francis, what else can I add? What, what other questions can I answer that will help? Because those are the legal steps. What else can I offer? I think you're muted. <laughs> um, no, no, I think, I think you're good that you're covering, you know, the questions. And as the parents have questions, you can fulfill them as well. Um, I'm going to quickly check the chat and see what else is there. Just one moment. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going up, I'm going up. Cliff, what is practical art, graphic design, Photoshop? Um, 
I, I think the mechanics of what art is required, I'd rather leave to an expert. Um, I don't want to differentiate between, you know, what practical art is and isn't. I, I would rather outsource that. So we'll bring someone in to help us just understand exactly what we need to do and what would be required. We'll be able to see who will be teaching each grade before we make the decision. So as I'm speaking to you in general, you'll notice at Queller, we tend to post the tutors, the bios, the backgrounds, and you have that. But again, it's very close to the start of the course date. As we're speaking to you right now, we've reached out to a number of tutors at Queller Prep who are pursuing teaching and education degrees. We're using their network. I have a number of uh, licensed teachers right now who we've also reached out to, and we're reaching out not just to people who work at Queller, but to their networks of teachers who work at who work outside. So this is act this is active and this is live and this is in real time. So there are quite a lot of requests going out right now to check in availability. Keep in mind um, a lot of teachers don't want to go back physically into work. So I, I, I can say probably with confidence that quite a few excellent staff members um, we're going to be able to retain because of the dynamics and what's going on right now with the ever evolving, you know, um, situation with the schools. Will we be able to see who will be teaching? Yes. I know for the supplemental courses, highly qualified, co you know, the college students are really good. And if we get them, we're also very lucky to have them because some of these staff members, they're just incredible. So let's, um, let's say this, we're, jo Joanne, we're going to be able to more fully answer this as we get definitive yes or no responses from the licensed teachers, the school teachers, the tutors, the staff. As a, There's quite a lot up in the air today that will not be a month from today. So we're going to be able to, you know, relay who instructors will be as we get a firm yes or no with who's able and available to teach. Um, I have a really good feeling about the teachers and the staff that we're going to have because there's just, there's a lot of interest in working in, you know, this type of environment as opposed to, you know, some other options that are taking place right now. All right. So go ahead, Sarah, if you can please continue. You're on mute. You're on mute. Okay, I, I want to answer Jamie's question again. Um, I uh, who said I have already applied with the letter of intent. Excellent way to do that. Aren't we supposed to wait for a response from the office? Yes, they will give you an answer. I believe it's within 10 days. And then you can send your IHIP, um, the individualized home instruction plan to them as well. And, and just so you know, the IHIP they, you have to complete one for each child. So if you're if you're homeschooling multiple children, you do have to send in one per child. Whereas the letter of intent, you can actually send in for multiple children. You can choose to write a letter of intent for each child, or you can include all of them on once, making sure you have the birth date, the um, and the birth certificate, the grade level, and the age. As long as those are very clear, then you'll be okay through that. Um, uh, the next question says, what if you only want to do homeschooling for one year? Do you take the testing for someone rising into sixth grade? You have to choose the standardized or the narrative assessment. Because you're going into sixth grade and it has to be done at least every other year, you can say, we'll do a narrative assessment this year and then the standardized test in seventh. And then, and if you are not homeschooling by that time, that's perfectly fine. Of course, I think standardized testing is a, I agree uh, with Francis, it can be a great marker of, of skill and aptitude and where the students are at in comparison to other students um, as well. Let's see, Jamie says, can you send a letter? Oh yeah, sorry, that was Queller. Would we be able to join during the school year if we can't from the beginning? Yes. So the only guidelines are before July 1st and or, sorry, or um, within two weeks of your decision to homeschool. So within two weeks of your decision to homeschool, you need to submit that letter of intent as well. Okay, let me read Jamie's. Doesn't this still apply procedures for development within 10 business days of the receipt of the notice and school district? Yes. So we're going to work on the details and the logistics um, of, you know, the letter of intent and the paperwork. I, I just, I don't want to focus too, too much on that right now. I just want you to know that it's something we will get done and we're going to get it done as a group. 
should yeah. you decide to operate with the Quetler Prep Homeschool Co-op. Um, I want to just see if the parents have any like important questions that they want to ask about the mechanics or the running or the shifts, um, any protocols, please type that into the chat so that we have that as well. We are going to focus on teaching core subjects and we can add in a webinar, a workshop, which we do all the time anyway. So in terms of just fire safety, um, I don't think the physical, uh, just the gym component, we, I think we're going to have an opportunity to, you know, we could have kids do things at Queller Prep or just, you know, I've seen other schools with their physical education requirement, you know, they'll, they'll just, you can work around it, meaning the kids still get phys ed, but like they'll do like, for example, three like laps around a building. Like I've seen options where they've worked around it successfully. So just keep that in mind also. Um, and we can always do like a Zoom exercise also. There are just some ideas that we can work with. So it's not definitive. I think we're gonna have a lot of leeway right now. Am I correct, Jamie? Because of COVID, we're going to have an opportunity. I, I personally wanna focus a lot on the core. I want to put our time into the core subject and core learning that we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Um, can you add anything about like, just because some parents are asking about the gym requirement is, can you help us like just generate like a better understanding of how that would work? Yeah, and it depends if you partner with someone uh, online, if that was one of the subjects that Queller Prep said, hey, we're going to partner with someone who teaches it online and that's what they do. That's an excellent idea because then students can do it in the safety of their own home or with their parents out um, at a park or something like that that is a really great idea as well. Um, and again, I think something to keep in mind this year is public schools are still also trying to figure out what that looks like. And so requirements could change. There will be a little bit more grace and flexibility for public schools as well, because 30 kids running in a gym playing basketball together isn't socially responsible anymore. And so the, the way that physical ed education is looking, it, it's just going to change. It's going to look different. It's going to look new. Um, but I thought, uh, Francis, your idea of doing an online physical education class could be a really yeah. great. And so I want to go over some just sizes. Um, Jack asked, what, what do you, do you know the size of the middle school co-op in Queens? They're only going to be about six to eight kids because that's the way that we laid the classrooms out. Um, we also have each desk, there's only one student per desk, which is paradise for them. I mean, I wish I learned like this years ago. Um, so there, there's only one student per desk and the desk is covered. We have a kind of like a, like a thin, like a plexiglass and each desk has a custom mount around it. So in terms of that, they're only going to be six to eight if even. Um, in Manhattan, they're only four to five. Again, it's the way the rooms are, are done. Um, how do we send these documents to DOE? Um, Sarah, are they just mailed? Are these just hard copy mailed letters? Is that correct? Like the mechanics of sending the intent letter? Yeah, um, uh, in the PDF that I'll send out, there's also an email that they can send. But uh, so, and, and it's just different because of COVID right now where you used to be able to lock your papers into that address, that 333 address. Um, but so what I'm gonna say is yes, you definitely mail. And then if you'd like to on top of that, you can also email, um, I don't think I have it on this slide, but I'll also send an email that you can, but I have to tell you, yes, you have to mail it in. So do you know, so the other question, do you know, okay, so we, we, I think we should mail it and email it and get like a, con I would go to the post office and get a confirmation receipt. I would send it, make sure you get a receipt, a signature, and also do an email just so that you have two documentations that this was sent over. It's better to overdo it than under it anyway. Um, can we choose in-person co-op or Zoom? We're gonna offer both. Um, pricing, will there be a different? Yes, I mean, Zoom is obviously, you know, we're going to be able to have more kids. It's a cheaper route. There are behind the scenes expenses. As I said, we're working on an accreditation process, which is rather lengthy and it requires, um, you know, some outside legal work. The actual space of our classrooms, you know, just for the intended person, a purpose that we originally had, now we're operating at like, barely, 50, not even 50%. So just keep in mind that there's been a lot of restructuring. Then there's also the cost of the teacher. We want to hire good teachers and they're not cheap and they're not going to come into work 
unless they're paid, you know, and, and there a lot of them won't even take the risk to come into work unless they're paid. And forget the teachers, the college students, the graduate students. I mean, I am just telling you, it is not going to be easy to get excellent staff if we don't pay them well. So this is going to be a private, you know, I'm, I'm extremely open to receiving government funding, but I don't see a pathway for that to happen anytime soon. And then they're going to hear that we want to administer a bunch of testing, which quite a few know they're already against. I don't see it. What I do see much more realistically, we're going to offer Zoom, we're going to offer online, and we're going to offer class instruction. Um, it's in a private setting. Um, I can tell you, real, it, probably be prepared if you opt for the Weller co-op, it's going to, the Zoom is 1500 a month, and then you're, it's going to be around 2000 per month, just, just to put everything in that we need to put in, and to get the right teachers to run and teach these classes. We have, for example, for the 7th and 8th graders, we have a licensed earth science teacher who would be entering that class and teaching that class. I mean, the opportunity cost of them choosing Queller, they have to have the right incentive and that's what we're gonna be pushing for as well. Um, and we're very fortunate, we have quite a few of our staff um, that they will be receiving, you know, teaching and li teaching licenses and we're literally gonna bring them in. So uh, we're very, very lucky that we do have a great base of existing staff, but we're also using networks to incentivize, you know, teachers to come into Queller to help us run this program. Um, Sarah, you've really been amazing and I'm looking forward to you, you know, holding my hand through the process and me torpedoing you with a lot of questions as we go through it. Um, I think at this point, we should just give you a very huge, gigantic thank you as we're answering more questions, but I just wanna quickly look. Um, these are some really important questions, so let's make sure we address them as well. Cliff, how flexible will a switch be from online to in-person, the other way around? I mean, Okay, so look, today, as I'm speaking to all the families, Queller Prep is running online classes. We have a lot of kids running around, there are like 700 kids online right now. A tremendous amount of behind the scenes, but we got it done. Number two, we're also running in-person classes in Queens and Manhattan. If we need to run this program, you know, heaven forbid, the, the whole thing has to go online, we're fully prepared to do that because the groups that start in September are gonna, you know, we're gonna continue. We're just gonna switch over to online. I don't see it happening with the social distancing protocols that we have in place right now, but just be, you know, this was something that we already had to think about at Queller Prep, you know, back when we got the green light to open the day camp. So that was the, you know, we had to fill out a, a very, very lengthy, you know, to get state approval to reopen. So keep that in mind that we already have a plan in place. Um, I, I don't think you should be so concerned with that right now. You should be concerned that we want to hit the ground running. And the day after Labor Day, we want to start class. We want to get, we want every, we want to get all the kids settled. We want to start running what's essentially going to be a private school. How flexible. So we have the switch. Um, do we lose our GNT for fourth grade? So Sarah, I have a question. If the kids homeschool for one year, and then the following year, they want to go back to their, you know, original school. Um, mm -hmm. Is it like a, is it a case by case basis or it's a really good question. So for example, yeah. some kids, they go to like Q300, um, Nest, Tag. Some kids are in really good G&Ts right now. If they're homeschooled for a year, uh, like, do they have to speak to the principal leader? Like, how does it work for it? Let's say they want to go back in. So let me ask a clarifying question. These GNTs, are they public GNTs or are they private? Yes. Charter? No, they're public. There are specifically some kids who go to public GNTs. So if they're homeschooling for one year, do they, is it like, a, are they doing permanent damage losing their slot? That's a great question. And it kind of is this a step by a case by case basis. But what I would ask, because I don't know every situation of every school and it, dif it looks different for private charter and, uh, public is whatever the process that that you had to go through to get in that school in the first place my guess is that you would have to reevaluate what that looks like and even redo some of that so for example if you had to apply write an essay and take a test you'll probably have to apply again but many schools will actually do a one-year hold and you can ask your superintendent or the principal about that hey we would like to put our um, spot on hold for one year, what can you do for that? And then they would be able to accommodate for that. 
So I just want to share with you, and again, I've run Queller for 15 years now, and I've seen everything in terms of going in, going out with schools. Um, in terms of students in grades three to eight, we've had cases where kids, for instance, left Nest, or they left TAG, or they left schools. They were then able to re-enter the schools when their other school wasn't a good fit. So we've had these situations where, you know, the parents, it was a case-by-case -case basis to re-enter the schools. Something that I will tell you with confidence we're going to be offering a lot of test prep to the kids who are here. So they're going to be ready to take tough exams to place into excellent schools once they're done with our program. I don't, I mean, I, I, just, I don't see us homeschooling forever. I'm only planning on this being a one year thing right now. I would love to offer accredited classes. I just want you to know this is not a permanent thing. Like we already have a really good thing going with Queller Prep where we have, you know, the weekends and the evenings and, and the holidays and kids are here and I love it. They're here winter break, they're here summer. So we already have something that's great in our program. We are adding to fill a void that's here. And in a few years, who knows, it might even be my own kids. So mine are four and five right now. So I'm just saying we're, what we're doing right now is we want to make sure that certain kids who want this service are going to be on a good track to do it. In terms of materials, um, those of you who already use Queller Prep know we provide all the material. So that should not even be a concern on your end. We will make sure all the kids have whatever materials they need to properly and effectively. We have, I refer to them as monster printers at Queller. We will print, we will publish, we have books, we will get, we, I mean, we're going to get high volume. We have multiple high volume printers here. I, and we will deliver materials door to door as well. I don't foresee us having an issue with material. We're not partnering with public school. We're not partnering with private school. We're doing our own thing. We're doing a homeschool co-op. So this, it's, it's just a genius idea. Like Sarah, I, I can't thank you enough for helping me understand the mechanics of it. We're going to use material and, you know, to make sure that we're covering the right, you know, and going through all the correct resources. I just want, oh, in terms of tuition, we're not going to charge separately for textbooks. I don't want a nickel and dime. I think it's fair to say that's how we've always run Queller. Parents pay tuition and then we figure out what books they need, what materials they need. You know, look, the truth is, look, the IC books cost us twice as much money as the grade three books. You know, look, it is what it is. We don't, we're not going to nickel and dime, you know, because, you know, something is $20 less or more. Um, those of you who are taking certain courses should probably realize that you're getting very expensive books, but I just want to make that clear to you. In terms of the homeschool curriculum, um, I, I want to just make sure I'm answering a few more of these questions, which are great, okay? Um, so in terms of tuition, you're paying one month at a time. So just keep that in mind. We're not looking to get like a full, you know, tuition for the year. Because if it's not your cup of tea, you have an exit route. You're doing, we're going to do one month at a time. And hopefully you'll be very happy. With regards to supplies such as textbooks, will there be a separate fee? No. There will not be a separate fee. We're charging tuition. We're going to make it work within the tuition. We've already taken books and materials and supplies, snacks, refreshments. We've taken that into consideration, you know, when building the tuition in. Do students have to come every day? Okay, so this is very important. For the daytime program, which is 8 to 12 or 1230 to 430, we want the students to have a daily commitment. I, I don't want to create a situation where the students are coming, you know, to their regular school Monday, Queller Tuesday, they have a brand new teacher Wednesday because she quit and decided not to continue in the public schools. Like, I just don't want a zoo here. I want a structured program from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. There's going to be two shifts. The morning is 8 to 12, and then we have another shift, which is 12.30 to 4.30. If you want to go to your regular school, we still have the regular Queller Prep programs. The kids come Saturday, Sunday after school, holidays. That element of Queller is not going to change. But homeschool, we need consistency. We need order. We need you to have an assigned teacher. We need organization. So the organization is going to take place from 8 a.m until 4.30 p.m. across two shifts so that we have proper social distancing. And depending on demand, I would love to take high school. I just don't physically 
see that space opening up. And then in terms of online, we already have a lot of classes for high school students, evenings and weekends. So, you know, that's an option. Um, I want to make sure I'm answering some of, more of the questions. Thank you so much for asking them. I'm going through it right now. Just a moment. Um, so homeschooling two to three days a week at Queller is not an option for what our intended purpose is. The intended purpose is to offer Queller Prep Homeschool as a full substitute option to what you would be doing in your regular day school, which might be a little bit messy this year. So we really want to have a structured, organized plan. And then we are also going to be heavily researching testing so that the kids who are with us on a daily basis are doing internal and external testing so that we're, you know, hitting the right benchmarks with the metrics and diagnostics. Um, let me keep going. Uh, are you expecting the co-ops gun? Yeah, no, we're definitely, we're going to go straight through June. That's a hundred percent. I don't know if this is something we'll do next year. I, we could, you know, I just want to tell you, we, we could absolutely run homeschool. And by then I, I, here's, I'm, I'm, I shouldn't say this right now, but I'm telling you the plan because I'm, oh, I don't know. Sometimes you say it doesn't happen. All right. Here's the plan that might happen. It might happen. Fingers. See that? See that? Okay. We are currently working on becoming an accredited school. Queller Prep is hoping to offer degrees. We are hoping to get middle states accreditation. So I don't think the plan is going to be homeschool where the parents have to do these letters of intent and, you know, meet all these modules. I think a year from now, we're going to be offering credited schools. Like, I think we're going to have a Queller Day School if you really want to know what I think is going to happen in 12 months. So today, I can't say it. I can't speak to it because we're in the middle of working on the legalities of doing that. And we're working on this, like, very lengthy accreditation process. So please keep that in mind. As I'm speaking to you, we're going to commit to a year of homeschooling. The actual credit worthiness of this a year from now, I think we're going to be in a whole different, you know, league. And to be really honest with you, I've always wanted my own school. I'm getting it now. Okay. Um, let me keep going. Uh, please talk about how you will handle the transition to high school for middle schoolers. So the beauty of our program, if you choose to do it, is that we already focus on prepping middle school kids for great high schools. So we're going to inject those resources, those materials, that test prep methodology into a day school curriculum as well. I always said, if you did SHSAT prep, for example, all day long, and you know, like it's not offered as a daytime class in school per se, it's an extracurricular, but we're absolutely going to help kids prep for tough exams in our homeschool curriculum. I mean, can I show you the camera? Look at this, guys. Look. Do you see all these books? Look. Do, 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 do. It's all lined up against the wall. Do you see that? These are just some of the books that we have here. Okay. So keep that in mind. It's very important. In terms of grades, we're going to have outside testing. So you're when you when you leave Queller Homeschool this year, for, if you choose to go that route, okay. If you choose to go in our direction, where you're gonna be part of our cohort, whether it's Zoom, in person, online, you're going to have several different testing, internal and external, in terms of grades. So keep that in mind. We're not, when you present your um, future high school or middle school with options, we're going to provide you with a file of different options. So just keep that in mind, whatever path you go on. Um, and I really, I, I'm looking if there are any more questions. Um, screen schools, look at grades, attendance, not just the SHSAT, but you're still taking exams. You're still taking, you know, there, for, I just want you to know, there's so much testing out there. There's, we didn't even touch on it. There's map testing, the, the Terra Novas, the ERBs. I mean, there's just a lot of testing. We're probably going to do a variety of everything in terms of testing. And I like it. I like, I mean, if, for example, if we adapt the map curriculum, which is what Eunice does, we're going to know exactly where your kid is from day one. And that's very helpful for us as well. Um, let me, I just want to remind everyone, this Queller test prep, test prep, high schools will not be looking at attendance this year. No, correct. Specialized high schools look at SHSAT. I can't speak to, I cannot speak to that right now. I can only tell you that if you opt to do homeschooling, Sarah has given you a great path. If you opt to do Queller Homeschool Co-op, we're going to have an extremely structured path because we're a test prep center. So we're going to spend time focusing on 
building test prep skills so that you can go to the next level. So we're going to work on all of that within the parameters of Queller Prep. You know, I'm really fortunate. Like I see the product. I see what happens to kids when they're here for 10 years. Like I, I, I get, I'm really lucky. I get to see their college applications. I get to see their essays. I get to see the statements. I mean, I have this, we, and, and as you know, we visited colleges, we visit high schools. I've seen it all at this point. So I've seen the transformation. We have an opportunity. It's a one year opportunity to have the kids full time, you know, at the prep school. So that's something that we're going to put quite a lot of time and energy into. And I'm looking at the chat again. Um, how much would the Zoom homeschool might, okay. So as I'm speaking to you right now, keep in mind, it's an inclusive tuition where we're working on it. We're, we're going to offer a sibling discount as well, but be prepared. It's not going to be cheap to retain a good teacher. Some teachers, realistically, we might go as high as six figures to get some excellent teachers. There are certain instructors that we want here who are just amazing. And Teaching kids at a young age, really, really tough concepts will require some excellent teachers, tutors, staff, support staff, and there's a lot of good record keeping that we need as well. So right now, as we speak to you, the Zoom program, $1,500 per month, and you, can, you only have to pay for the first month. It's just to get started. And then in-person Queens, because we're going to have six to eight kids, 2,000, in-person Manhattan four to five kids. So just please remember per classroom, per classroom, 25, it's 10,000 for the, for, for four kids in the, in the room, we have to cover the teacher, the overhead, the material. So just keep in mind that the rent, um, you know, the elephants in the room. So just keep in mind that tuition wise would be 1500 zoom, 2000 Queens, six to eight kids, Manhattan, 2500. We can only go four to five in Manhattan to run the co-ops. Um, and then the teachers themselves, we're going to have main instructors, but we're also going to rotate instructors. So the, the, the kids are actually going to stay put where they are. It's really going to be about the teachers moving around so that the kids get all the subjects that they need. Um, let me just keep going a bit more. Can homeschool co-op students still take state exams? Um, the Hunter test, absolutely. They have um, a Hunter qualifying exam, which we're going to prepare the kids well for. There's also some testing that aligns, which Hunter will accept. They won't take the math exam, but they will take, um, there's a number of testing that they will accept. But either way, we're going to prepare kids well for the qualifying exam, which we do anyway. So keeping that in mind, we'll do that. Um, let me quickly check the chat and see if there's anything else on the um, state. Okay. So with the state ELA and math exams, um, for now, I'm going to say no, but I will say yes, because I, because I, I've tried that route. I, but here's what I will tell you. We're going to push very hard to administer regions exams to the seventh and eighth graders. I mean, the eighth graders, I think are going to be a no brainer because we're going to pair with, you know, schools that private schools that I, for example, I can, I mean, I can name them, the Windsor School, where they can help us administer Regents exams. So we can definitely do Regents partnerships. Um, ELA Math, I've tried that before and it didn't go so great. So I, I don't think that's going to work, but other exams, we will definitely administer, you know, testing. So just really a blanket statement, we're, we're a test prep program. Um, with the Hunter exam, the last I heard was that they're going to look at students' fourth grade ELA math state scores. This year, they won't look at fifth grade because the fifth grade, you know, exams were not administered. But what the last I heard, but it hasn't been published yet, is that the, the administration is going to look at fourth grade scores. Um, the minute we hear, you know, something is on record and written about that, we're going to obviously send it out in an email blast. We're just waiting. We're waiting for that information to be published. I can tell you in years past for the Hunter exam, the cutoff was a 625 ELA, a 625 math. It's probably going to be around the same this year, but the only difference being is that they're going to look at fourth grade scores. Um, separate and apart from that, Hunter generally doesn't even tell you if you qualify until, you know, mid to late September. So just please keep that in mind that you shouldn't expect to hear from them. I, I think safely by October 1st, it, it's extremely premature right now. The school's not even in session. They're not even responding to any, you know, main emails right now. Um, so if a student has problems with levels. I think every single student is going to have problems with levels. We had dramatic interruptions that occurred since March and there was a lot of, you know, 
um, immediate adapting that didn't go so great with a lot of kids. We're only talking about if we're doing in person in Manhattan, four to five kids in the room. And in Queens, we're only referring to six to eight. I, I really just want to say, let that be our problem. We're going to test the kids and we're going to see what extra help they need. And we're going to provide it once they're enrolled. So it's going to be something that's handled, which is what we do every summer. You know, we, everyone enrolls and then we divide everyone accordingly. I mean, we do it every semester anyway. Once the kids are enrolled, it's going to be our problem. We're going to address it within, you know, the abilities and the resources that we have. Um, I just, those of you who, who are familiar or not, at Queller Prep, so we run our main program and then we do like free extra help. So kids who are struggling always have an opportunity for free extra help outside of a structured, you know, class. And we'll continue to do that as well. We're not just going to teach and then leave the kids alone. Like we're always going to offer these additional options. We're not looking for parents to spend more tuition. We want to cover the expenses that we need and provide what, what is needed, you know, within the parameters of the program. Um, let me see, when is the application for high schools? So as I'm speaking to you right now, that's been released in the high school handbook and the directory, um, it's kind of beyond the scope right now of what we wanna focus on. I, we're, we're gonna send separate emails. We're actually hosting a different workshop. So that's a great question for a different workshop. Um, and Alina Adams is hosting that. I believe it's later this week. We're sending uh, quite a few emails about that and a reminder. So she's the better one to speak to. I can tell you that the SHSAT is scheduled and the exam is in place for November 7, 8. So they did push it back about two weeks later, but I think that was just, um, Truthfully, I think it was just connected to Halloween being on a weekend, so that's all. Um, yeah, correct. The online Zoom class would be 1500 per month, inclusive of materials, books, supplies, group setting, and um, we are actively developing and building the program out. Um, let me see. Internal tech. We, we already have software that's really good, so we're already administering really good software for the you know, students who are doing our summer program, and it's, it's great. It's secured. The kids upload. the They get a score right away, which is great. We generate score reports. This has actually been a really good summer in terms of just generating scores and you know, getting stuff instantly. I mean, we had no choice, but we, we really like, you know, adapted to the changing time, so we have that. Um, and I do want to stress, we're doing internal and external testing. So kids are going to take exams with Weller Prep, and then we're going to separately assign, ex you know, we're going to help kids register for external testing because we want, we really want to see how kids are doing, you know, not just at our center. I don't, I mean, I, I really like that they're taking exams with us, but at the end of the day, like the kids will take 10 practice SAT exams with us or 30 practice SHSATs with us. I want to see how they perform in the real day. So we're going to administer, you know, all models of testing. So I, I also want them out of their environment. So they see what it's like to take exams outside of the, you know, Queller prep. So keep that in mind too. Um, as far as schedule, as I speak to you right now, at the moment, we're going to follow the DOE calendar. Um, you know, the calendar is going to be really flexible as well. I, I, here's, what, here's what I want to say. We have a lot of families from different races, different religions, demographics, holiday schedules. Some, you know, I, I really want to, I want to work with parents and I want families who, you know, they want to end early on Friday to have that option. I'm really telling you, we're going to work with you. We're going to follow the DOE calendar, but I don't necessarily agree with all the, you know, days on, days off, holiday breaks that are not allowed, holiday breaks that are allowed. The, the skeleton of our program will follow the DOE calendar. But, you know, I think that we get to create a calendar. So it's going to be really cool. So we're going to work with the DOE calendar. And then we're going to have, you know, opportunities where we can schedule, for example, parent-teacher conferences. We're going to have some great options. And um, I'm actually really looking forward to that as well, the creativity part of this program. Um, the pencils, the markers, the notebooks. There's a lot of amazingness that we're able to do um, you know, now that we'll have more control over the program. Let me see if there are any other questions. But everyone, we're winding down. We actually have another Zoom webinar where we're going to go over 
Kai is running an IC review. So you're welcome to tune into that if you guys want. Um, I just want to see, please type thank you um, into the chat because Sarah really did this on a moment's notice and on a Sunday morning. Um, as far as schedule, are there winter and spring breaks? The answer is yes, because we're working with the parameters of the DOE calendar. But we're going to play around with some modifications um, you know, with the calendar as well. So just keep that in mind. We're, we're going to work with the calendar, but you know, I mean, we'll work with it. It's, it's not, I don't want to speak to what I, what I haven't done yet. So I just want to speak to what we have right now. All right. Um, I want to just say thank you to everyone for listening, for being part of this and just for being part of this journey. And just remember the Queller Prep Homeschool Co-op is something optional. There is tuition. We have to charge. So it's an optional, but if you decide to homeschool, just remember you have that legal right to do it. And you have every legal opportunity to homeschool until Carranza and you know, they figure out what they're doing with the school system. Please remember that this could be a great year for you to explore you know, a different type of learning with your child. We at Queller Prep are you know, committed that we want the kids to develop very good test taking and skill sets. I just know it's really important. If I didn't go to a top college, if I, if I didn't graduate with honors, if I didn't go to law school, if I didn't pass the bar, I wouldn't even be here right now. My parents are immigrants. Make no mistake um, about how my education played a gargantuan role in my later success in life. And I'm out of school for like 20 years. So please remember that you have an opportunity now. I also really want to add this before we close and as the parents are writing thank you into the chat box for Sarah and for her time. The actual art, the beauty of becoming a good test taker is that you build confidence. You develop self-esteem. And I can speak firsthand as a woman, as a business owner. I am a mother. I have two children. I manage staff. I've never killed any of them. I'm just, I, I work with millennials. Do you know how much patience I've adapted in my life? Please remember that there's a beauty to developing test taking skills and, you know, say what you want, but you don't need to use a lot of sentences. You know, I, I'm a lawyer. I passed the bar exam. Those are really beautiful words. And you know what? It builds confidence. I didn't speak like this before because I was a child of immigrants and we grew up in this like little apartment and, and my parents have really low self-esteem. Like I'm like the alien child. I just want you to know, but I'm also the first born in America. And I really, I, I really do want to say I've lived the American dream. I have because my parents literally came here with nothing, like nothing no network, no friends, like a, a small handful of relatives who also didn't speak English. So I, I'm really telling you, like, I'm blessed to, you know, be in, in that environment where I grew up one way and I'm, you know, raising my kids in another and with resources, you know, and I'm definitely going to remind them daily that they have all these resources I didn't have. I mean, just the fact that I can even navigate the school system is like a privilege, you know, it, it's incredible. I didn't know. I didn't know I can't even tell you how much I learned in reverse, but you know what? Everything happens for a reason and the reverse learning that I did helped me, you know, fueled my anger and it launched what is now Queller Prep. And we have a lot of kids who have gone through this program. So just keep that in mind. Everything happens for a reason. Perhaps right now, this is our big opportunity to, you know, run a homeschool co-op and to have, you know, a certain amount of kids here full time. So maybe, maybe we are having the future leaders at our prep center. Maybe, maybe they'll be the future mayors and chancellors. And I'm going to light a candle and pray for that right now. All right. So I want to wish all of you a huge thank you. Thank you for, you know, typing the thank you into the chat. And um, just keep in mind that Sarah and I are going to be holding hands through this entire process because I want to make sure that all of our ducks are aligned perfectly as we're, you know, navigating the homeschool co-op for Queller Prep. Um, feel free to tell your friends and share with relatives that we're running two versions of the co-op. It'll be an online one, and we're also running the in-person options as well. And um, obviously, we're maintaining all social distancing guidelines, and you know, we're going above and beyond. I mean, you're welcome to ask me what we're doing. We're doing everything plus. You're, by the way, as parents, you're welcome to inspect the area as well if there's ever something that you think we're missing. But I really think we've covered our bases um, very, very well. I, 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 I want to stress this. 
we are currently running daytime programs at Queller as I speak to you right now. So it's not like we're just like suddenly starting. I'm not ordering plastic. I'm not ordering plexiglass. I'm not doing anything more than what we've already started from the summer. So, you know, we had to get ready really fast when we got the approval to open June 29th. So, uh, you know, we're aligned pretty well. Um, and that's it. Let me see if there's anything else with the chat. Um, the tuition for Zoom is less because it, it, it makes sense because the, the Zoom tuition, granted you're getting the same books, materials, supplies, we're going we're gonna to hold 10 kids into the Zoom class. So that'll be another opportunity. And I also want to stress, you don't have to do the Queller Homeschool Co-op. It's an option. It's a private option. We have to charge tuition to retain teachers and so on and so forth. But I, I just want to stress, this is something that, you know, you can even do in, with cohorts and with groups, you know, uh, on your own. I mean, a lot of people form co-ops. Um, I just think that at Queller Prep, we're in a good position to form a co-op because, you know, we do so much test prep anyway. So this, this is just the next big thing. Um, a chance for students to socialize. They're gonna be socializing really well with their group. Oh my goodness, this is really cute. We actually have a Queller wedding. This is very cool. I swear, I'm telling you the truth. We actually have, not one, not two, there are three different couples that met here, so it's very cool. In terms of socializing, you know, they're gonna socialize really well with their group because I, I'm not interested in mixing the kids. I, I don't want the germs, I don't want the anxiety. Everyone's using the bathroom at different times. You know, I really, I, why don't you take the existing friends that your kids have and see if you wanna do a group registration into the homeschool co-op because I am definitely not interested in kids mixing from one classroom to another. I mean, they're, I, I, it's too much of a risk that we're not going to take. So um, they're, they're going to stay with one group, but you're welcome to, you know, handpick the group by choosing four or five friends to do this. Um, is it a Zoom homeschool class? Yes, we're going to have that option. Thank you for the information. Oh, I got to thank you. You are awesome. Thank you. I like hearing that I'm awesome. I like all these cool ideas. I really want to share this with you, uh, everyone, whoever's left listening. I really wanted to open my own school. This was always on my radar. And when the mayor announced that he's doing this like partial school opening and, you know, when all of this like Michigas was happening, I was like, you know what, this, I literally reached out to the lawyer. I reached out to the architect and I started to push for, you know, doing, doing this, just put, I set wheels in motion. So I want you to know, this has always been on the back burner and I think now it's on the front line because we want to get this done. This is something that we really want to do for the kids. And I really, really enjoy having the kids here full time during the summer. And I've always said that I would love to do this year round. So keep in mind that we're kind of executing an old idea that was always kind of, you know, cooking. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the execution. And Sarah, I'm so excited about teaming up with you and working with you and your husband who was homeschooled for, 20 years. Um, I'm, I'm really happy that you developed a curriculum. I'm really grateful and thankful that you're such a smart cookie because um, we're going to go very far together developing this curriculum. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Um, a few more questions. Could there be both homeschool and public school since kids will... I you're well, you are at Victor and I'm telling this to the other parents, you are more than welcome to use Queller Prep tutoring and educational services on a Saturday, on a Sunday, after school, on holidays. But uh, this is a really narrow focus. We just want kids who are coming full time. I just want to quickly play out a scenario with you. What if I have a student who's coming to Queller Monday, he goes to his regular day school Tuesday, that day school teacher quits on Wednesday. I just don't want to mess. I don't want to have a messy situation. And then what if the chancellor suddenly announces that there's no testing whatsoever that's going to take place in the schools? Like, I, I really would like to have a very structured program. And, and I really want the same kids at Queller from day one. So we know exactly who we're dealing with. And we have a goal that we're going to set. You know, we're going to have benchmarks every month, every quarter, an acuity exam. So I, we're not looking, this is not going to be a homeschool you know, like one day a week thing. It's, you're welcome to use Queller Prep. We already have that. There's no change to that. We have enrichment classes, but we're specifically referring to a homeschool co-op where we're going to fully replace 
uh, whatever the plan is, someday we're going to know that plan um, in the in the public schools uh, and, and some of you who want to opt with private schools. Um, I, I think the most closely, uh, if I had to summarize it, we're kind of like going to be a basis because we're doing accelerated curriculum. So it's like a basis plus a lot of outside testing because that's also something basis is missing. They don't have the outside testing. So that's the plan. We're gonna be like a basis with outside testing within the legal context of a homeschool co-op environment where we're able to you know, you know, know, meet all the proper modules and all the right like benchmarks. Um, I think we've covered all the big chats. Can we send the curriculum? So Sarah, you'll email me the slides, okay? Yep. Yep. Um, Sergi, you're, ask, you're asking about the curriculum to students. I think once the kids are enrolled, we, we can send you a skeleton. We can send you a skeleton and a framework, but the actual like 200 pages of curriculum per subject, no, we're not sending that over. What we will do, which makes more sense, is we're going to have a skeleton of what we're going, you know, our goals and what we're looking to accomplish. Um, Financially, we're gonna we're gonna run sibling discounts as well. We're as much as we can, but our goal is not going to be to offer heavy discounting because we need to get good teachers. I already know. I already know from the tutors and how they operate. Like they have to be compensated well enough to work and well enough to respond to my two a.m. text message to get something done by eight a.m. So it's it, it's just the nature of the beast, and we need to incentivize staff to do their job very quickly and. They're also going to have employment contracts. They can't leave mid-year. I, I can't. I don't want surprises here. So keeping that in mind, um, you know, we're really our number one is going to be to run a very strong program, and uh, we're going to do it on Zoom and in person. I think we've covered all the questions. Is there anything else? We're good and we're strong. Um, Diana, it, that email that you just sent. Do you mind um, if you just plug it into the um, the Google form that the parents filled out, and we're going to send the slides. Okay. Um, if you have friends, I encourage you to consider registering as a group so you have that option. Um, please just keep that in mind. So believe it or not, we have another webinar coming up, so I have to get going. Um, not that I'm preparing much for it, but I, I, I need to open the Zoom so that I get the next, um, you know, speaker for it ready. Sarah, you've been great. Everyone, wasn't she great? Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Back. Thank you. Definitely. All right. Okay, and on a, on a lighter, happier note, as we're as we're winding down, we can say hello to Goldie. Does anybody want to see Goldie? Goldie, are you here? Come, guys, we're winding down. Let me see where Goldie is. She is somewhere. Nope, I lost her. Hold on, Goldie. Oh, there she is, guys. Ready? Okay, who wants to see the dog? Look at the dog. Goldie, look at Goldie. She is on top of the oh. color book bags. This is the mascot of Queller Prep Tutoring and Educational Services. She's a, she's a very happy emotional support source in our center. Okay, thank you everyone. If you guys wanna get off the mute and just say thank you, you're welcome to do that. Okay, go ahead. Goldie, say goodbye. Thank say you. farewell. Thank you, thank you so much, Sarah. You were great and you covered a ton of information. Okay, Goldie, hello. Goldie, great. say goodbye to the meeting. <laughs> I'll email you the depths and slips in just then. Got it. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah. Thanks. I'm gonna. So thank you, everyone. I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit end meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening.